groups that are in the exhibition. Now there's, um, there's two from a, a larger series of photograms that I made when I was in the States on a Fulbright. And it was really to begin a new project related to bees and inspired by you know, the global threat of you know, decline in bee populations worldwide. And really just, it came out of uh, the fact that I'm a beekeeper and I have uh, hives at the bottom of my garden. And I love the idea of just a project that was very close to home that could be you know, inspired by my kind of observation and learning about bees. And, uh, and often when I begin a project, something I like to do is I don't necessarily know how I'm going to work. I, I don't, that doesn't, you know, I, I have, I think about ideas and I think about, sometimes about issues and I'm probably, I'm an environmentalist at heart. So I'm trying to relate, I always try and relate projects that I'm involved in, involved in to the things that are very close to me. So bees, there they are, the bottom of my garden. And Photograms. I don't, you know, these things, uh, when I begin a project, I often need just to explore ideas through the medium and through processes. So when I don't know what I want to look at or see, I can imagine uh, working through the invisible aspects of photography, something about photography that has completely always fascinated me is it's, it deals with the surfaces of, and appearances of the world, but it's through processes and mechanisms that are invisible. And the idea of making photograms uh, just occurred as uh, something that I might imagine making. So a lot of photography that I have been doing involves working digitally, sometimes with film, but translating it through digital media and looking at images on screens. And that can be very deadly, tiring, and you know, very, it gets very ideas oriented. Uh, all the processes of making photograms involves those wonderful aspects of photography which deal with invisibility. So the processes are chemical. They uh, involve using things that can't be seen. You have to work in the dark, so. Uh, and yes, so I just began exploring this idea of the photogram. And then when I got to uh, Chicago, uh, it was the end of winter. Uh, beekeepers in Chicago were opening their hives and finding whole populations dead. I joined a bee club and uh, asked beekeepers to save their entire populations of dead bees and put them into their freezers. And I would go and pick them up. So the idea of using photographs was to collect uh, the wings of dead bees that I would lay out in my living room, top of a 23-floor apartment building in Chicago, overlooking the lake, and pluck the wings off dead bees. And I collected this little pile of dead bees, and then I imagined how I might work with them. And laying them on film, working in the dark, with this, uh, and exploring ways of <coughs> letting light kind of pass through film and these tiny ephemeral wings was just a little exploratory game. And as it often happens when you work that way, there were some marvelously surprising results. So I just fell in love with this process of uh, working with invisibility and producing images that uh, play with the wings of bees. But the surprising things that emerged through the process were photograms are often kind of defined by a kind of flat kind of shadow which is created by the absence of light. What, the way that I worked with kind of film and rolls of film and passing light through film generated really quite beautiful shadows. So in three dimensionality which you often don't see in a photograph. So I uh, just explored that for about three or four months and came up with a series of works. to the material process as the medium of photography is a, a it's p playing with light and chemistry and there's a I'm a bad scientist 
but I loved science at school. Mm -hmm. So I, but I'm quite a good alchemist. So this, you know, the way that science kind of rolls into uh, photography is endlessly delightful to me. So I can find out about that media materials, but I always do the wrong and the bad thing with it and get surprising results. That I use science then to learn how to repeat. So you have to understand about light and you have to understand about those materials. You have to understand the chemistry. Uh, and then you do kind of bad science, in a way. Uh, that, but in relationship to my larger projects, um, I think I have a, an ongoing interest in some really um, fundamental aspects of photography, and that's its relationship to touch. So the sort of the, the, the how that the surfaces and appearances that you collect in photographs relate to a kind of sensory experience of the world. And whatever I'm doing, whether that relates to people or to places or to kind of animals or to bees, um, I think I'm searching for ways to use aspects of photography, the lens, the ways of seeing the world to kind of engage uh, a relationship, physical and sensory response to the things that I'm interested in. And if there is a broader, I suppose there is a broader, I'm, I'm more and more interested in the question of how the kinds of uh, questions that art can address related to kind of the issues the world faces. So you don't set out to be a, an environmentalist photographer, but you know, you I fall in love with something and then I want to make pictures of it. <laughs>